United Kingdom. The party will set out the timescale, we heard this from Nicola Sturgeon, for such a move in its manifesto ahead of the Scottish parliamentary elections in 2016. Well, I'm joined now by the deputy leader of the SNP, Stuart Hosey. Very good morning to you, Mr Hosey. What happened to once in a generation? Well, we were very clear last year that we came to terms with that referendum. We respect the result. And what the First Minister has said is we can't rush into this. What she's done, I think, rather skillfully, properly, honestly, openly, in advance, is to say, you know, here are potential triggers that could trigger a subsequent referendum. No change in many ways. We've been saying this since the referendum last year. We have, yeah. We have, and, and I think Nicola has restated it now, uh, and I think it's right that we give that clarity. But the fact that it's in going in the manifesto, you haven't said that before. Well, what we're going to put in, in the manifesto is the kind of thing which could trigger a subsequent uh, referendum. So, for example, when the No Side campaigned in the referendum last year, the constitutional framework which we were to vote no for included staying in the EU. Should you know, there be a decision to come out of the EU, particularly if Scotland voted to stay in and the rest of the UK voted to come out, that would be a constitutional change. Now, also, it's self-evidently the case if the Scottish people felt they'd been sold a pup, that they hadn't got the promises kept that they'd been made. You know, you remember what Gordon Brown said, the closest thing to a federal state within one to two years, a, an unprecedented programme of devolution is how the Prime Minister put it. If the Scottish people decide... Uh, the former Prime Minister. The former Prime Minister, apologies. Hey, no, no, David Cameron said that. Uh, he, he said an unprecedented programme of devolution. Uh, should the Scottish people uh, take the view that they've not been given anything close to what was implied by those promises, then the public will determine that they want to and also flow, also flow from that um, post-referendum environment, the issue of English votes for English laws. If Scots feel that they're excluded, that they're not getting full representation within the current House of Commons, would that be a potential trick? Well, we'd have to see, because certainly at the moment, what's been proposed is unworkable. I mean, the, the example of income tax is a cracker. I mean, the UK politicians say, but you're getting income tax. No, we're not. We're getting rates and bans. We're not getting the definition of income, earned or unearned. We're not getting the allowances that go with it. And that means we could be carved out of decision-making in Westminster, which would actually change the forecast yield for the Scottish Government, and there's precisely nothing we could do about it. So we need to look at the detail of that, the technical detail, because right now what's being proposed is simply unworkable. And all those are, are technical points. The, pe yeah. the people can assess, you know, sure. Britain, Britain votes to overall to, to leave the United Kingdom and things like that. But something else Nicola Sturgeon said yesterday, and this directly pertains to the election of, of Jeremy Corbyn, and I paraphrase, uh, obviously, if Jeremy Corbyn isn't seen to be laying a glove on the Conservatives and the Scottish people decide we are stuck with a Conservative government forevermore, then independence is the only option. Well, let's be clear that the arguments for independence, or indeed any constitutional change, stand on their own. They, they are not dependent on who happens to lead a UK party or who happens to be Prime Minister. But you're right, the public themselves may conclude this is a busted flush. But how do you read that? Well, I mean, like we saw last week, uh, and this isn't the only way, but we saw last week uh, uh, the opinion polls for independence, uh, two of them. One, independence took the lead, the other was a substantial rise in support for independence. It's now extremely close in that second poll. Now, I think uh, uh, the Scottish uh, body politic has got enough mouse uh, and we're close enough to the public uh, to see when the move Okay, so, 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 so that's, that's indefinable. As we yeah. talked about the other technical triggers. If any of them, or a combination of them, come to pass, mm. and David Cameron or whoever is Prime Minister says, no, 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 you said once in a generation, we in Westminster are not passing legislation for a referendum, a binding referendum to take place. Would you also consider holding a, a unilateral one, holding a, an indicative one, and then saying to Westminster, the Scottish people have voted for independence? Well, the language actually used was once in a political generation, and the second uh, thing about that is we have said, and we're absolutely clear about this, and I still am, <clears throat> there had to be a qualitative shift in circumstances, and the First Minister is laying out what they may or may not be. But in terms of the passing of legislation, uh, we were quite clear we could have held an indicative referendum anyway. Uh, the fact there was the transfer of power to make sure it was done was very helpful. But I think if there was a mandate to hold a referendum at some point in the future, if the public had determined that there was going to be one and there was a mandate for a referendum, 
I think any UK Prime Minister who tried to stand in the way of the Scottish people would be very, very foolish indeed. And in the short term, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, big chance here, isn't there, given some similarities when it comes particularly to social policies and things like that, to, for co cooperation between the SNP and the Labour Party in opposing the Conservatives? Yes, absolutely. We think Jeremy Corbyn has probably voted with the SNP more than any other, lead, uh, any other Labour uh, MP. Uh, he's now the leader, so he's a challenge. If he can bring his party with him on the things he believes in, which in many, not all by any manner means, but many are the same as ours, then perhaps we can have the opportunity of a genuine progressive alliance that we spoke about at the election. So if, for example, we can have Labour rolling in behind to say no to Trident and its replacement, if we can have Labour rolling in behind to say let's properly reform the House of Lords, no more unelected peers, that would be a great result. But of course, he has a challenge to bring with him many people, a number of whom, as you know, have said they won't sell. We've been discussing the very issues you've noticed. Deputy Leader, very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Stuart, how is he there?